you know, if I take a very small piece of a trajectory, then my vector delta r will be tangent to the trajectory. So it will be going in the same direction as the unit tangent vector t. And what is its length? Well, its length is the arc length along the trajectory, which is what we called delta s. Remember, s was distance along the trajectory. So we can write vector dr. So we said it's dx comma dy, but that's also t times ds. It's a vector whose direction is tangent to the curve and whose length element is actually the arc length element. I mean, if you, you know, if you don't like this notation, think about divide everything by dt. Then what we're saying is dr dt, that's a velocity vector. Well, in coordinates, the velocity vector is dx dt, dy dt. But more geometrically, the direction of a velocity vector is tangent to the trajectory, and its magnitude is speed, ds dt. Okay, so that's really the same thing. Okay, so if I say this, that means that my line integral of f dot dr, well, I say that I can write it as integral of m dx plus n dy. That's, that I, that's what I will do if I want to actually compute it by computing the integral. But if instead I want to think about it geometrically, I could rewrite it as f dot t ds. Okay, so now you can think of this, you know, f dot t is a scalar quantity. It's the tangent component of my force. So I take my force and I project it to the tangent direction to the trajectory. And then I integrate that along the curve. It's still the same thing. And sometimes it's easier to do it this way. So here's an example. Let's say, so you know, this is bound to be easier only when the field and the curve are relatively simple and have a geometric relation to each other. You know, if I give you an evil formula with, you know, x cubed plus y to the fifth or whatever, there's very little chance that you will be able to simplify it that way. But let's say that I'm doing, say, my trajectory is just a circle of radius A centered at the origin. Let's say I'm doing that counterclockwise. And let's say that my vector field is xi plus yj. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, so my trajectory is just this circle. My vector field, remember xi plus yj, that's the one that's pointing radially from the origin. So hopefully if you have good physics intuition here, you already know what the work is going to be. Right? It's going to be zero because the force is perpendicular to the motion. Well, Now we can say it directly by saying, well, if we take any point of a circle, sorry. So, you know, if you have any point of a circle, then the tangent vector to the circle will be tangent, well, it's tangent to the circle. So that means it's perpendicular to the radial direction while the force is pointing in the radial direction. So you have a right angle between them. So f is perpendicular to t, so f dot t is zero, and the line integral of f dot t ds is just zero. See, that's much easier than writing, well, this is integral of x dx plus y dy. What do we do? Well, we probably we set x equals a cosine theta, y equals a sine theta. We get a bunch of trig things oh, it cancels out to zero. It's not much harder 
but we saved time by not even thinking about how to parameterize things. Let's just do a last one. That was the last one. Let's say now that I take the same curve C, but now my vector field is the one that rotates. Negative yi plus xj. Okay, so that means along my circle, the tangent vector goes like this. And my vector field is also going around. So in fact, at this point, the vector field will also be going in the same direction. Okay? So now, F is actually parallel to the tangent direction. So that means that the dot product f dot t, remember that's the component of f in this direction, that will be the same as the length of f, right? But what's the length of f on this circle if this radius is a? It's just going to be a. That's what we said earlier about this vector field. So at every point, this dot product is a. Now we know how to integrate that quite quickly. because that becomes the integral of a ds, but a is a constant. So we can take it out. And now what do we get when we integrate ds along c? Well, we should get the total length of the curve, right? If we sum all the little pieces of arc length. But we know that the length of a circle of radius a is 2 pi a, so we get 2 pi a squared. If we were to compute that, by hand, well, what would we do? We'd set, so we would be computing integral of minus y dx plus x dy. We'd probably set, since we're on a circle, x equals a cos theta, y equals a sine theta for theta between 0 and 2 pi. So then we would get dx and dy out of these. So y is a sine theta, dx is negative a sine theta d theta, you should differentiate a cosine, plus a cos theta, a cos theta d theta. Well, you'll just end up with integral from 0 to 2 pi of a squared times sine square theta plus cosine square theta d theta. That becomes just 1, and you get the same answer. It took about the same amount of time because I did this one rushing very quickly, okay? But normally it takes about, you know, at least twice the amount of time to do it with a calculation. So that tells you sometimes it's worth thinking geometrically. <laughs>